Nigeria is celebrating 58 years of independence and President Mohamedou Buhari is assuring Nigerians that the federal government is committed to ending the crisis in the northeast while addressing the age-long conflicts between farmers and herders. The president shared his optimism today in a special broadcast to mark the nation's anniversary. In an address that covered several areas of national life, President Buhari commended the youth for being at the forefront of Nigeria's march to nationhood and unity. As Nigeria clocks 58 years on October the 1st, 2018, it's the point in the country's history when it's been battling unprecedented security challenges. On this occasion, Nigeria's number one citizen speaks to the nation and offers some hope. There has been a steady improvement in the security situation in the Northeast. We remain committed to ending the crisis and make the Northeast safe for all. We know that the goals of the Boko Haram terrorists include capturing territories, destroying our democracy and denying our children the right to education. We will not allow them to succeed. In his Independence Day broadcast, President Buhari also zeroes in on the farmers herders conflict that has spanned the length and breadth of the country. The age-long conflict between herders and farmers that was being exploited by those seeking to plant the seeds of discord and disunity among our people is being addressed decisively. We will sustain and continue to support the commendable efforts by all including civil society organizations, local and state governments, and our traditional and religious leaders in finding durable solution to this problem. Besides the insecurity dilemma, the president also highlights the gains of another kind of war that is being waged against corruption. We are making progress in the fight against corruption and recovery of stolen public funds and assets despite vicious and stiff resistance. There is now an enabling environment for local and foreign investment in Nigeria. We are a rules-based system, a level playing field that is free from fixers and intermediaries. This is the moment when Nigeria is at the threshold of another election year. If there are concerns about the conduct of the polls, this is what the president has to say. I have committed myself many times to ensure that elections are fully participatory, free and fair, and that the independent National Electoral Commission will be exactly independent and properly staffed and resourced. The ballot box is how we make our choice for the government that rule in our name. The youth are also commended for their role in the country's progress and development. <laughs> President Buhari offers this assurance to them. In the first three years, we have introduced many policies and programs targeted at youth development and youth empowerment. We support the Not Too Young to Run legislation aimed at giving the youth greater say in our national politics and governance. In an oblique reference to the menace of fake news, the president warns against the irresponsible use of social media. Now we have in our hands technology that is a powerful tool that we can and should use for knowledge and understanding. As with other countries, we must also learn how to manage those tendencies that instead look to abuse new technologies to provoke passions and stir tensions. With all the assurances offered by the president, all eyes will certainly be on the nation's leadership to see if words are matched with action as Nigeria continues on its journey to nationhood. Joining us now is an African affairs analyst, Mr. Yinka Oyeniji. Thanks for joining us on the program. Good evening, ma'am. Today, as we as Nigerians are celebrating 58 years, are we truly independent? Oh, well, um, 
I would have to be careful in answering that. Uh, tell you the truth, um, someone has said before that Nigeria does not have the kind of natural disasters that other countries of the world witness. In Nigeria, the human beings, Nigerians are their own disaster. So it would be not right at all to say we are independent. Independent of what? Independent of hunger? Independent of corruption? Independent of nepotism? Independent of tribalism and agitations? No, I do not think we are actually independent. And I'll quickly put this in. Now, you will understand that in recent times, it has been in the news that China has been affording different financial deals to African countries. Now, for Nigeria to toe that line, China having its own direct conflict with the United States in terms of economy and trade, we shouldn't be going cap in hands, seeking aid and all of that. And as long as we do that, without developing our own internal revenue generation and infrastructure, we cannot be said to be independent. If care is not taken, we left British independence or colonialism about 58 years ago. We are marching into Chinese slavery shortly. Mm. So you're saying we're tying into another kind That's of... That's what it is, mm. by ourselves and even some external influences, including countries like China. In the president's address today, he did not mention the NLC strike, which has been called off. At this point in our democracy, is it a utopia seeking tangible minimum wage? I'll tell you the truth, and I had mentioned it here uh, in this TV station before. Even if Nigerian civil servants are entitled to 500,000 per month, it's not going to make any difference, all right? Because they are chasing the same goods and services that those who have amassed wealth are buying. So you get 500,000 and yet house rent is going to 1.5 million or 2 million, what does it mean? So I would rather be looking at allowances, I would rather be looking at services and infrastructure and a reduction in taxes and that can be done, all right? Because if you, for example, in Lagos State now, you buy a vehicle and you want to register it, the price has increased. But if that is reduced, for example, if you are not paying for school uniform or school fees according to Child Rights Act, if you have public transportation that is working effectively well and you do not have to fill your vehicle, you do not have to maintain it every day as a result of the bad roads, then you realize that we are not paying as much taxes. So what we need, what the Nigerian civil servant requires, is a reordering. They call it a wet distribution, redistribution sometimes. But we need those infrastructural facilities to work, whether we receive 18,000 naira or 18 million naira. Yeah, let's talk about democracy. Recent elections have shown violence is still part of the process. Can we ever have a peaceful poll in Nigeria? There will come a time, uh, call me a prophet if you like, there will come a time when public office will not be attractive for anyone to want to win at all costs anymore, all right? And uh, we cannot keep folding our arms when we hear that people lose their lives as a result of electoral processes. It is wrong. We need to place more premium on human life. So would we have peaceful elections after a while? Yes, if we choose to still enjoy democracy. But after some time, push will come to show. We are getting very near to that place. Mm. You spoke about China earlier. Um, China and Singapore once started out in worse situations than us. How can we as Nigerians utilize resources so that one day we can have a success story like China and Singapore? It's very, very important for us to have that political will. It is absent everywhere right now. And I don't know if to even apologize to make this kind of reference. I won't know why a government that owes salaries and pays modulated salaries will get reelected. That cannot be, by any shred of imagination, the will of the people. It is wrong. And I would not know why I thought you were even going to talk about the president's speech himself. He made no mention of Leah. Leah is still in captivity. He made no mention of the Bring Back Our Girls campaign. There are over 100 girls still out there somewhere. We lack the political will to change things. Those are not present right now. All you need to do to ask yourself is this. For anyone who is standing in elective office, show us your political will to dare this situation. Everybody talks about the fact that we have bad leadership in Africa, but nobody shows us a different kind of leadership. So the vice presidents can say, oh, we have been plagued by ba bad leaders. Okay, so but what have we done in the last three years to show that this leadership is different? We are recycling people. Now, what we need, more or less, is political will to say, we do not care whose ox is God. Things have to truly change. That will will ensure that when we are doing trades with the international community, we will put our people at the forefront. The government of Ghana 
said to the French president, we are no longer looking for aid. What we want is for you to come in and see where you can invest. Don't give us the aid. But in Nigeria, we are seeking the aid. So until we have the political will to say things must be done differently, irrespective of whatever kind of politi policies we come up with, it won't go anywhere at all. African Affairs Analyst, Mr. Yinka Oyeniji, thanks for joining us on the Thank you very much.